So today we're going to talk about how data flows between the SAGE HRMS component and the SAGE 300 CRE payroll. So we're going to focus today on making changes in employee data. Um, the HRMS will be our primary point of entry for making changes to employee data. So we'll compile that information and export it over to the SAGE 300 CRE payroll. This is an example of the type of information that transfers over. So basic demographic information, name, address, phone number, current rates of pay, uh, their current occupation or job in your organization, and benefit-related deductions for health-type benefits, 401k savings plans, and the employer fringes. Now we can also send over other data that you may have set up in miscellaneous fields. In my demonstration database today, I don't really have any of those set up. So we'll concentrate on some of these core areas there. So I'm going to go ahead and open up the SAGE HRMS. I've got the record open for my employee, Brad Pitt. He, this is now showing his demographic information here. So I'm going to go ahead and give him an address change here. So he's moved. He is now going to be at 7201 North. Northeast Daytona. He's still in Portland, Oregon. But uh, we'll go ahead and apply that to his record here. Now I'd also like to go ahead and do a job and pay change. And in the HRMS, we do these as tasks so that it uh, will go through the proper workflow and update the records and create history records there. So I'm going to select Brad. And I'm going to do a pay. This will have me go to the pay and performance screen. And I'll also do a job change as well. So his current rate of pay is $28 an hour. We're going to go ahead and change that to $29 an hour. And it's asking me if I want to create a job history record, which I do. And he is listed as an arborist now. We'll go ahead and make him our landscape architect. It's giving me a little warning. We have some salary grade ranges set up in my system here always an option. I'll make our effective date today's date. And uh, the change has also done that. Uh, use that as the change date for that. So we're going to go ahead and save that information now. I have the training module out here, and it's looking for any changes and training requirements based on that. Now, the information that's brought up now is I have several plans that are established in the HRMS. This first one is a company paid life insurance plan. And the premium, and uh, as well as actually the benefit amount, is a function of the employee's salary. So when I make this change, it affects those particular plans. So I'm going to say the reason for the change is promotion and job change. So this is for my company paid life insurance. Also, I have an accidental death and dismemberment plan, again, a function of that. And the last uh, wage-based uh, insurance plan out there is also a long-term disability plan. Those are all very common examples of plans that are have either the premium and the benefit as a function of the employee's wage. So one of the beauties of that is those wage changes, I've now changed the premium, it's done the calculation change for also the benefit as that function of the employee's wage. So now I'm going to go ahead and minimize my uh, HRMS and that. And I'll pull open the uh, Timberline payroll record for uh, Brad. So we're looking here in this record, and we see he's the occupation. He's an arborist. And we have that old address here, 424 Elm Street. I'm going to go ahead and look at his pays. He is at the $28 an hour there. And then um, when I look at his uh, fringes, I can see that we've got some uh, additional insurance there, which was our um, 
life insurance, I believe that's how I have that mapped out. So sometimes I'm tracking additional benefits in the HRMS system that we may not necessarily track in um, the Timberline or the Sage 300 payroll system. Really depends on you if you want that fringe portion to go over. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of his record, and we're going to go ahead and look at the integration piece. So um, I want to talk a little bit about uh, the different uh, ways we configure the system. So I just want to look at one table in here. This has to do with the employee's benefit information. So we don't have to make changes to our setup in our payroll. So we have our medical plans all set up here. Um, and we're just telling the system what our payroll codes are and what our codes are for the HRMS out here. So I may want to um, add an additional one out here. And I may want to um, look at the uh, health. And I may also uh, put this to our um, company paid life insurance plan. And I can take over the employee contribution if there are any limits associated with that. Um, we can do that. Now we have the capability also, you may have in your uh, establishment set up, you may be a weekly payroll, but you may have made a decision to only take contributions out on a um, four times uh, a month. So those uh, instances where we have the additional payroll periods in a month, you may not want to do that. So uh, we can decide how we are going to send this information over to uh, payroll out there. So really up to you to go ahead and make those decisions. As part of the implementation, we would decide on that. Okay. So now we've looked at the cross-references. I'm going to go ahead and assemble the information. I have, uh, in this instance, I'm going to do my changes since I'm going to do today's date because we made those changes effective today and, um, and as well as our effective date. Now I can do things ahead of time in the SAGE HRMS system. So I may have, in fact, got new plan uh, rate tables for our benefit plans. We may not be changing carriers, or I may have something like a cost of living increase to spread out. I can do those ahead of time, but what we're looking at in the integration piece is effective date. So as an HR professional, I can get some things done ahead of time when I know these things are going to change, but it's not going to impact payroll until it's ready to be that effective date. So. For our demonstration purposes today, I have just decided to assemble a single employee out here. Um, and so we're going to go ahead and assemble our uh, records out here. So I've got, um, giving me my information, I'm going to change one employee master count record. That affects six benefits. There was one exception there, so that's probably in that benefit that I just set up. So let's go ahead and go to our reporting here. And we're going to look at our exception report. And I can look at that in the screen. So for the general exceptions, there were none. I need to go to my benefit exceptions. And I have a feeling that was that uh, plan that I just set up there. So it um, didn't map over correctly. So it's giving me a warning. I have a chance to go out and make those changes to that plan. Um, so that our setup is correct. But I have the ability to run all of these audit reports, go back, assemble the information until everything <clears throat> is perfect, and then I can go through and um, do my, my updates out there. Okay. So for our purposes today, I'm going to go ahead and just post our information out there. So uh, oops, I have to uh, come back out and uh, do my export. So it's still telling me I had that one exception out there. For our purposes today, I'm still going to go ahead and do that. And I can do this update now. 
Um, I can schedule it for a later date, uh, later in the day. If I do that, I need to keep my workstation open. But the, the little flag here is I can't have that payroll record open. It will stop the update process. So I closed out of the payroll records there, and I'm going to go ahead and do this now. And um, so it's telling me that I didn't have anything posting problems. I knew about that one benefit exception already, but during the post process for the things that we knew were going to go over, there were no errors there. So I'm going to exit out of this, and we'll go back into payroll, and we'll look at those changes that have been made to our uh, test employee here. Okay. okay. So we see that address has been changed. We'll go ahead and look at his pay information. And we can see that change from the $28 an hour to the $29 an hour. So we're happy with that. We can go in and look at his um, fringe amount. So we had a change in his um, amount that went over for his uh, life insurance as well. So that information has updated as well. Now there's additional modules that are available that can bring over transactions once we've paid an employee and um, done, uh, done some paid time off. We can bring those transactions back into the HRMS system. We do have the capabilities to do a little bit uh, better reporting on time off for employees via our employee transactions here. So anytime they take that time, we can show it a little bit easier versus just being able to run a report out there. The third component of the um, uh, inter integration is also the ability, once we've done payroll in the SAGE 300 CRE payroll, if you have the SAGE HRMS employee self-service, we can actually bring those pay advices back into the self-service so that you can eliminate having to mail direct deposit advices or enable your employees to print um, copies of older payroll checks um, so they're not having to come to HR and payroll each time they need that information. So that does our quick little walkthrough talking about the integration between the two systems. If you have any uh, questions, you can contact your Alliance Solutions Group representative. Thank you.